school. I went to school up here mm -hmm. and go down after school and they had a, a Boston Ledger. Boston Everything Ledger. Everything done with pen and ink. Yeah, okay. Today is December 13th, 1984, mm -hmm. and my name is Joe Todd, and this is an interview with Mr. Vernie Oates in Shattuck, Oklahoma. Mr. Oates, where were you born? I was born at Woodward in 95, and my older brother, two years older than me, was, they claim was the first boy baby born in Woodward. And when is your birthday? What month and day? September the 1st, the day the Russians shot down that plane over there. It was 80, 88. And, uh, the Russians shot down the plane? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, we moved from, uh, I was working in the bank at Ivan Hall. They, they come out and got my dad, or wanted him to go in and be vice president of the bank here. We moved here in 1909. To Shattuck? Yeah. Who was your father? Uh, Robert. Austin Sloan Oates, and I got his middle name, or Austin part, that's capital of Texas. He was born and raised down this side of Fort Worth, and, and before there's any fences, why, in the 80s, back there in 18 and 80s, he hurled herded cattle now for Texas guys through, well, they came west of Shattuck. Oh, on the cattle drives? To Dodge City, yeah. Kansas. Mm -hmm. Did he ever talk about the cattle drives? Did what? Did he ever talk about those cattle drives that he was on? You know, herding cattle up to Dodge City? Oh, yeah. yeah. What did he say about those? Well, uh, he, uh, they got to a better market up there. You see, they took the Santa Fe and went on to, mm -hmm. let's see. How many head of cattle would be in one herd that they were moving? Well, I don't know. He never did say it, but I imagine there's quite a few because and then he said that some of the horses would get, there was no bridge across the Canadian, and uh, they'd get down in the quicksand, and they'd have to tie ropes around their feet and roll them out of there. Who was your mother? Uh, Big Law. What was her first name? Uh, Mary Alice. Mary Alice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse See, me. that's how uh, he come to meet her. I had a bunch of cattle and there's a storm coming up and he left his cattle out here on the this side of the Texas line and he knew there's a hotel over to and my grandfather was running the hotel. I had the daughters there. What was his name? Uh, he was a charter member to this Baptist church here. Uh, Grand Valet. And he ran the hotel in? Yeah. Lipscomb. Lipscomb. Mm -hmm. Were either one of your grandfathers in the Civil War I don't think so. They might have been in the... You see, they come across and went to New York, up in there, and then they, they heard about uh, Missouri, and they, St. Louis is where one of the boys 
mert uh, all the uh, hero kings fail. Uh, well, the United States gave him land to keep the Indians away in, in Kentucky and Kerr, Bob Kerr. Oh, Robert Kerr. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there was another Kerr. I've got the pictures out there. And there was another Bob Kerr had a brother in Missouri, too. And he met uh, the daughter, or that is one of the boys, Rudolph, met one of the daughters of Bob Kerr, and that made him my third great grandfather. And that's it. Uh, okay. Um, what kind of work did your father do? What kind of home? work? Well, he didn't. Uh, he, we had a farm out there uh, above that lake. The lake wasn't. They were just farmers in that lake, mm -hmm. and he got the first uh, threshing machine from Enid they ever had in this county, and he had some wheat out down there. And then we saw seven tornadoes one day down there. And we moved from that creek up to a north place closer to the railroad track. And uh, uh, um. How come your father moved from Texas to Oklahoma Territory? Well, he was born and raised down there, and, and the Indians were coming down and, and uh, stealing their horses. And uh, so, uh, Dad's father went with a bunch of people from cowboys from Texas, they went up and wanted to take care of the Indians. And there wasn't none of them come back. And Dad's father was one of them. What are your first memories of Woodward? How? What are your first memories of Woodward, where you were born? You know, the town of Woodward? Uh, what do you remember about that town? Well, uh, we was in, in a part of a uh, frame and log house. We lived in that, in the same uh, area there as the, the courthouse. How big was Woodward at that time? Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. But, uh, Did your father make the run of 93? Do what? Did your father make the land run? 93? Well, I don't know. Uh, he, uh, no, because when he uh, met my mother over there, there was three girls there at the time, Ella and, and uh, one of them married a on the name of Cup, and then uh, was it Will Rogers that, that had the, 
such a reputation of being, well, his uh, helper, or a guy that was with him. Dad, when Dad had to come to Shattuck, well, they'd get him to come out there and stay with us boys, and he taught us all how to swim. There was Crick there. What was his name? Uh, I've got a book with it out in out there and got that report. And the president of the United States made a speech along in 1911 or something like that and said that there was going to be weeds growing, grass growing in a lot of the small towns if they didn't do something, I forget now what. Mm -hmm. But anyway, well, this young fellow, he gets a bunch of, uh, of this guy's horses or mules or whatever they was using and plowed up the main street of Higgins and some of the side streets. I'm going to have a <laughs> <laughs> what kind of chores did you do on the farm? I didn't do nothing. I was around but to help my mother. And uh, she uh, taught me how to cook. And I'm still cooking. And uh, I had to cook for my last wife I had. She had cancer of the large intestine, and, and she went to, wanted to go to uh, uh, oh, uh, my memory is getting fouled up. Uh, well, Gwen Southers. Uh, that was her uh, son mm -hmm. was doctor up there. And my wife, she took painting lessons down here from that guy and uh, was acquainted with both of them, you yeah. see. Mm -hmm. she painted. Um, yeah, and my wife was a was the best painter he had. Huh, that's good. And he uh, told her that uh, well, she went, she and and uh, Miss Others both they went to Amarillo and took that course in the uh, well. Uh, Follow down we visited with down the my hydro yeah. that uh, he called it uh, witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you start the school? Where? Yes, sir. Well, I I went to Valley View down there. Where is that? Well, it's in the south west part of Ellis County. It's this side of the river. How and large was the school? Oh, just a country school is all. One room? Yeah, I think so. What was your teacher's name? Gosh, I wouldn't know, but I knew some girls that went to school there. And the teacher wouldn't let the, the youngest girl and me, when they'd have a spelling match on Friday evening, why well, she wouldn't let us be on the same side. We had to be on separate sides. How come? Well, she and I studied our lesson and knew what how to spell more words than the, than the others.
It was a mess. Do you remember Statehood Day? Well, the day Oklahoma joined the Union. Well, no, I don't think that was in 1907. Well, I was too young probably then because uh, we moved to Shattuck in 1909 and I was going to school down there. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what Shattuck looked like the first time you came to town? Well, it, uh, I get some uh, uh, letters from a, a guy and I know there's some other guys here do, do too that uh, that uh, them's pictures out here. He had pictures of the school building. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that ever wind in that school building would rattle when the when the wind blew. Yeah. How long did you live in Woodward? Well, we moved out here right after the well my dad had us slewed over to Higgins in uh, 1900 and we moved out there before that mm -hmm. what did your father do in Woodward what kind of work well he had a liver barn oh a livery stable he put in a liver table but he, uh, yeah, I had a team and horse, and he drove people to sell stuff around over the country, out in Beaver and out that way. And, and he even, when they built the new post office over there, while they moved his liver stable away. Did he have a wagon yard also? So he had to get him another liver stable mm -hmm. over there. Did he have a wagon yard with the liver well, stable? Well, I don't think so. Just uh, mm -hmm. it was right there in town. He couldn't have had yeah. just enough for and uh, How many horses would he keep? I got a picture of the liver bar that he had at Woodward. You do? Yeah. yeah. How many horses would he keep in his stable? I don't know. Do you ever? Because I was too young then. Mm -hmm. What was the name of his Libby Barn? Well, I don't know whether he had a name to it or not. And it, it might be on this picture. Yeah, it used to be where the post office is now. That's for the well, liberty that was at first. Yeah. Then uh, where did he build the new one? It was back uh, north a little ways. Mm -hmm. How come he moved to Higgins to run the saloon? Well, he just uh, heard about it and uh, that is heard about Higgins was uh, Short of, well, he built a, a building over there on the east side of the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had my wife's, uh, the big nose were all boxers. They, they learned how to box when they were growing up. And, uh, got him for his bouncer. They'd get guys, Texas guys would get drunk and dad would come home with some blood on him part of the time. And but this uh, Rudolph Bigelow, he never, he never did well, he might have some blood on him, but he had never was hit or anything. 
What was the name of that saloon? Well, it was, I guess, uh, Dad's name was Robert Saloon. Because mm -hmm. that's what they, they like uh, stores over there. Well, uh, they, uh, Wheat and Baran had a store, and we moved in a house just a little ways north of them over there. What did the inside of that saloon look like? Well, I don't know if I was ever, ever in it or not. Mm -hmm. Did that saloon close up at Statehood Day? You know, at, when we joined the Union, I understand all the saloons closed. I don't know. But uh, anyway, well, you see, we were over there in 1900. Well, I was born in 95. I was only five or six years old. Mm -hmm. I went to school over there. And Miss Wheat and Moran, they got to my, like I was the run of the family, well, they got my younger brother to, to box me one time and broke my nose and, and I had to, well, to, I was taking cold and I had to go to, Dad took me to Higgins, 35 chiropractor treatments to get my face was paralyzed from, from the licking I got. How come your family moved to Shattuck? Well, Stewart's wanted them to be vice president of the bank. And they were. And I went to school, and after school I'd go down there and I had a Boston ledger. It had to be pen and ink, put the, the checks down and deposits down in there. And, uh, Is that what you did in the bank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long did you work there? Oh, I don't know. Uh, and then I, they got the bank out to Ivanhoe. Why, Dad sent me out there to work in, and my uncle, Clarence Biglow, he was a cashier and I was a bookkeeper. And we moved to Follett in 17, uh, Ivanhoe did. And I rode down the, in the bank building. I had a room in the back of the bank building and I had an electric stove in there or something. And I had a bed and I slept and ate in that bank building. So they moved the whole bank building to fall in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said you rode in the building? Yeah. What were you doing in the building? I took the first deposit. K.F. K.F. Miller made the first deposit that was made in the bank of Paulette. Did you ride guard when they were moving the bank building? I am. Um, no. I am. Uh, was married to Bess, Bessie Denny out here, and uh, Fred Teton was the guy they put in charge of the old g and &E office building here, and he tried to get a boy that was working in the bank to come up there and take the book for him. And uh, I'd quit the bank out there and went worked for the railroad. I worked down here when there's 
land, and my youngest brother drank out of a barrel. He was a helping out there at uh, Logan, and he and another fellow got typhoid, and he died, and uh, the other fellow was the older fellow, and he got over mm -hmm. the typhoid. What year was that? Well, that was... Mm -hmm. uh, probably got it yeah. at home someplace. Yeah. How come they moved the bank from Shattuck to Follett? Follett? Uh, the bank from Ivanhoe. Oh, from Ivanhoe. How come they mm -hmm. moved that bank? Well, uh, they was trying to get a railroad up there and couldn't. Never, they'd be promised to railroad, and they never get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Ivanhoe moved once or twice before that too, up there in Beaver County. Yeah. How far is it from Ivanhoe to Follett? Well, it's uh, about seven miles, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And. Do you remember the Depression of 1907? No. I don't. I don't want to be about 10 or 11 yeah. years old. What about World War One? What did you do during the war? Well, I, uh, I was, uh, I was in the Oklahoma band, and they had uh, me to register for, it was up in, I think, I think I registered out. Did you have to go to the war? No. They, they never called you? They uh, told me to be ready a certain time, but when that time was up, the war was over with. What did you do on Armistice Day, the day the war ended? I don't know. That was November 11th, 1918. Well, I don't remember. You know, 89, my memory is not like it used yeah. to be. I could, uh, I still pick up things that, uh, but I was married to that girl, and when I moved to, from Ivanhoe to Paulette, why? I couldn't make both ends meet, mm -hmm. and uh, had her out there. And, no, well, she was here, and I had to, because the daughter was b born in 18, her, and that's one that lives at Woodward, married to Trigo. And she calls me every morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, tell me about the depression of the 1930s. How bad was that? Mm -hmm. You know the dust storms. Well. Uh, I don't know, back there in, well, I, thirty, that would be, uh, I was married and living in Shattuck down here, that is, but I took a job with the railroad, they had a 
office down on the north side of the railroad track there and I had a stenographer from Chicago down there doing the log for in Ireland. The fellow took care of the writing and this and that. Well, he had to write a weekly letter and this guy would write this letter and then Ireland would come to me and Howdy. Hello. Come to me and tell me that I was here. Uh, let's see. About the guy from Chicago doing the stenography? And he'd say, I can't look at this letter. He says, I can't send that in. He says, have you got time to retype that? And I don't know how many letters I retype. And there's no telling how much they was paying the stenographer from Chicago to do the type work and then it followed me. Was that when you were working with the bank or the railroad? No, it was I was working with the railroad. The railroad. Was that the Rock Island? No, the Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long did you work for the railroad? Well, I was gonna, well, it was after I was married, why, well, they sent me out to, to come in care of the of the book work out there where they was laying rail at uh, Fall Amp. I was in there when the first train came in. And uh, then uh, there was a fellow parent that uh, got in Dutch with a girl working in the office in Paris, and they uh, fired him and uh, wanted me to go out there and take charge of Paris office, and uh, I did, and I had my up here, you see, and had to pay out there, and I wrote the, the guy in charge at Amarillo that uh, I couldn't make both ends meet out there, and I wished he'd send somebody up there to relieve me, and. Uh, so I got a letter from him, and he said, had that work to do if I didn't want to do it, they'd get somebody else. So I wrote back and told him, you said just what I wanted you to say. I want you to send a fellow to relieve me Friday. I'm going to check out of this office Friday morning take that train to Shattuck. And so they, Irvin Bush, boy I know down here, brother of his, he was over to Spearman and they wrote me and told me they'd send him over there to take charge of the office. That's all they did, and I left on that morning train, checked the office over to Irvin Bush. And came back to Shattuck. And came back to Shattuck. who they name the town of Shattuck after? Well, I don't have any idea. That was really before my time. Because mm -hmm. you see, 
Jack was here when I was born over there. Is Shattuck an older town than Woodward? Mm -hmm. Couldn't be, but oil business fixed Woodward up. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Do you remember the big dust storm when it turned black? Oh yeah, I got some pictures. You do? Um, mm -hmm. Tell me about that dust storm. How bad was it? Well, I was over to Woodward, went over there with a, a friend of mine, and there's one came up, and it looked like it could be anything. And we, we didn't come the road that people travel now, went straight west, we found out there was a fellow out there that had a cellar and was going to the cellar. For that. So we went that road and went to the cave out there and stayed in that cave. And, and that thing come up and it'd be blue or red dirt in it. And, Dangest thing you ever saw. Mm. How long did that dust storm last? Well, just uh, one evening. Do you remember the big tornado of 1947? Well, but they had some more, and uh, but I've got some pictures of that out there. Of the tornado, of the dust storm. No, just. Uh, yeah. That's tar. What about that big tornado? Well, uh, that tore up Woodward. Woodward? Yeah. Well, it came from down here, where we used to live. Mm -hmm. Only it came up this way and and went over. Did it come near Shattuck? We went to Woodward that evening, and you couldn't get down the street we wanted to go, so we came back. It hit Higgins and came back and went with a couple to Higgins we knew over there. And let's see. Did it come close to Shattuck? No, it came down here about, uh, well, three or four miles mm -hmm. south. How bad did it tear up the town of Woodward? Well, it uh, tore up a heck of a lot of stuff. Well, the post office building, I was damaged and I had to build a new post office. Hmm. You said you couldn't get down the street you wanted to go down? When you went no, over there? We couldn't get down. It was all covered with stuff that bone and cross, you see. And so we got, went north and come out on another street. And, and we didn't even try to come back on the same street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you do during World War II? Well, I didn't have anything to do with that. I got a, my sister's husband's boys were in it, and they lived in Paducah, Texas, and uh, well, they lived out on a farm, but uh, east of Paducah, and uh, they, uh, I bought a army rifle, and uh, 
They brought back some shells for the Army rifle, and I bought some of those shells. Well, they gave them to me, I guess, because they didn't, they didn't have a Army rifle. They, didn't, they had to turn theirs in. What was your wife's name? Uh, well, I, I think I was born to Beth Denny, Bessie Denny, and Fred Teton. I was going to tell you about that. that uh, uh, Ray, Bill, Miles, I think, Bill, anyway, uh, he told Fred Teton, he was my brother-in-law at that time, he had married one of the Denny Gutters too, and he had the office building is down here or just south of where the old Western Auto store is. And he uh, told him that he couldn't quit that job and take I'm up there, and so Fred Heaton asked me if I would talk to him. I said, yeah, it would take just 10 minutes to change his mind. And so uh, I was 27. And uh, so uh, I'm, he married Ruth Rice. They lived. Up here, I used to have that brick house right across from the old school, where the old school building was, right across the street there. I lived in that. What year did you get married? I guess about 17. 19, and what? Well, it was 16 or 17. Yeah, and what was your wife's name? Bessie Denning. Bessie Denning. Mm -hmm. And Fred Teton married Annie, Annie Denning. Mm -hmm. uh, Where did you meet your wife? Where did what? Where did you meet her? Your Me? wife? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Going to school, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many years did you go to school? Well, I, I went to, out there, I don't know, six or seven years probably, maybe longer. And creek got up, we had to cross a little creek, walk over the slope to Valley View. And Bruce boys, John and and Milt Bruce and another one. Anyway, well, they went to school. They but they were grown people, and they went. Creek got up one evening in the rain, and they caught us kids and picked us up and tossed us across the creek to one on the north side. But my daughter was born in eighteen. That Mrs. Trigo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else you want to talk about? 
I don't know. Well, uh, Miss, uh, I'll finish up with this boy. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, anyway, why? Uh, he called me. He says, well, you tell Fred I'll, I'll quit the bank. I had already quit the bank and was working for the railroad down there. And uh, so uh, I was getting more money, too, because they were just paying $50 a month. And so I told this boy that if there was any grapes to be had, why well, the Stuart boy would, boys would get it. There was, there was John, Ed Stuart, J. H. J. C. Stuart, and Another one. Well, and then anyway, well, I told this boy that, and I told him that that was a a new business. I said it'll be a growing, and uh, your bank job you can sit on the stool till you die and never get a cent more than what you're getting and probably and because that's what I got out there if they'd have known I was sleeping and cooking and carrying on the back room why they'd have probably charged me rent but Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, Mr. Oates, I want to thank you. Yeah, but anyway, well, this guy, they moved the office to Woodward. I'll finish up with him. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, uh, Fred Teton died over there in a little while. And uh, then it uh, wasn't very long. Till uh, and he, they put him in Fred Teton's place, and wasn't very long till this boy, or they had a vacancy at Enid over all this area, and they sent him to Enid to take over that over there. And he's I had a card from him the other day. He said he'd been retired eight years now since uh, I uh, talked him out of the bank job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty good then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we worked over there for, and I don't know how long, but now he's retired eight years. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet he's getting four or five times what he had been getting if he was in the bank. Yep. And retirement, he's probably getting a thousand or better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm getting paid more than I was paid when I was working in the post office here. 30 years and seven months. Did you work for the post office also? I worked in the post office 30 years and seven months. Here in Shattuck? Yeah. What was your job in the post office? Postmaster. Postmaster? Mm -hmm. When did you begin working for the post office? I see, it's 35. 35. And uh, got too old for him in 65. And then I started helping Jim Ward. He was uh, doing tax work. And one year, I typed 185 tax returns and gave him carbon copies of them. 
then he dies, and the boy, his boy was helping, wasn't very long till his boy died, and his wife helped me then for in the tax work. Even the, the big shot in the tax office over to Woodward tried to buy Jim Ward out of the tax business here. He thought he could take it and make some money out of it, more than he is getting over there, you see. But anyway, well, he didn't. And then there's a, this another boy went with me over there one time, and this fella wanted to go hunting down on, they bought a ranch down south down there, up above where we used to live. And there's, well, we made tra quail traps when we first moved down there and caught 15 quails at one time. And, uh, well, thank you. I saw a hoop snake down there. A hoop snake? Yeah. What's that? They roll. Huh. And uh, we were going up the creek on another boy that had a horse. and They made the, they made the sorghum lesson on their place up above. Mm -hmm. And my dad planted cane took it up there and had sorghum molasses made and we had the, a room full of jars of sorghum molasses. How do you make sorghum molasses? Well, they take cane and and put it in a mill and, and squeeze the juice out of it and then put that juice in a... He had a big container that he put the stuff in. Um, Porter was um, his name was Porter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell us again about the trains going through Gage. Well, that was, uh, we used to have, well, it still it was a main line, you know, passenger trains and all went through. And uh, the troop trains would go through, and we would run up to the depot when we'd hear one coming and run up there and watch it go through. And, and uh, the, uh, the boys would throw hardtack crackers, you know, uh, with their addresses on it and their names and addresses, throw those off. We'd run and pick those all up, and, and then we'd have someone and we'd write to them. Did you correspond with many of them? Not too many. Of course, I was rather small for that. Mm -hmm. The older girls probably did more than I did. <laughs> okay. Now, you said your uncle was in the Civil War. Uh, yes. And what was his name? Henry T. Massey. You say he was a captain? Yeah, that's what it was, was the Henry T. Massey. At home I have his, uh, where, what he served with and everything, but I don't have him. Yeah. Uh, which side did he fight on? 
Union. Union. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're all Union. But <laughs> did he ever talk about the war? Hear any stories about what he did? That I don't know because I didn't. I didn't. I say I was only a little over three years old, mm -hmm. and uh, he died right after we got here. So I didn't get to uh, visit with him or anything. I just I just remember that he looked so much like my grandfather that I thought it was him again. Mm -hmm. Well, anything we haven't talked about yet? Oh, uh, the, he was a captain in Illinois. Oh, he Illinois? Was Illinois. Uh, uh, the, in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else that you can think of to talk about? Well, uh, well there's a lot of things. <laughs> um, Bill said when he called me something about the library. Of course, see, I ran yeah. the library for about 13 or 14 oh, years. Okay. And do you want me to just go ahead and talk to you? When I took it over, it was just a pile of dusty books down there and a couple or three little homemade unpainted shelves to stack the books on. So I started organizing it. And the people who had had it before uh, had tried to sort of organize it, but it wasn't uh, very well done. And uh, they, uh, they had the library in the old uh, post office building, which was the back of the bank to where it is now. It was just in the back end of that building. And there were just stacks of these old dusty books and everything back there, and even a big pile of trash in one corner. And so I sorted all that out. And, and, uh, but how I came to, uh, to take this over was that uh, they'd had some meetings to organize the library. and. Uh, they were about to just have to let it go because the fellow that had been trying to do something with it was being transferred away from here. And so I said, well, I'd, I'd do what I could with it. And I said, I wanted Shattuck always to have a library. And uh, if I can uh, get it started up, and I said, as soon as I can get it up on its feet to where Shattuck wants the library and will not throw it in the street, I will quit because I don't want to just keep doing it. And uh, that was in 19... Uh, 64 about, I expect. And uh, so I ran it then until 1977. And, I mean, I, I kept it until 1977. It's still going? Yes, and it's still going. It's, it's very nice now. We have a nice library. I'm very proud of it. And, how uh, many books are in it? How many? Mm -hmm. well, when I was down there, we had around 10,000, but uh, I don't know. I think they, of course, when I left, I think they cleaned some of that out, and I don't think they have maybe that many now. I don't know. But uh, the state came out, and uh, we tried to get a multi county library set up of it, but our taxpayers didn't go for it. And so we're still just a little city library down here. I think it's the only one in the county, in fact. But, uh, I had had never been a librarian. I didn't know anything about libraries, but I set it up the best I could and uh, got the books all sorted out, got everything in order, and, and uh, uh, pulled it together. and And I think now it's in real good shape. And uh, my son is a librarian. That's his uh, profession. And uh, so I thought, well, if I take over the library, I'll have every uh, I'll have plenty of information to fall back on, so when I needed to know something, well, I got him on the phone and asked him what to do. And uh, that's mostly, but it, it just went ahead and it's just done real well down there. Yeah. The state helped me out quite a bit there for a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, when they turned the Mulder County Library down, why, they pulled all their stuff out again and we didn't have any more of it down there. Mm -hmm. I don't guess they do now, I don't think so. Uh, the, the Shattuck look pretty much like it does today as it did in 37 when you first came here? Yeah, pretty much. Only there's a lot of nicer homes and a lot of building that way has gone on. The uh, buildings up and down Main Street are just about the same, though. A few new buildings. The bank is new and the post office is new. Who were some of the prominent businessmen when you first came here? Well, uh, 
John Stewart and um, uh, D.F. Jackson and let's see who else. I don't uh, think of anybody else particularly. Of course, we were quite active in the Chevrolet, all the Browns too. They had the Ford dealership. Mm -hmm. Stedman's had uh, a dealership of the, well, they were Ford at that time. And uh, I don't know what else. Okay. Anything more about you? There might be a lot of things that I could tell you, that, but I'd have to have somebody jog my memory about it a little. Mm -hmm. It was an earlier day. Like that gauge when we first moved there, they had watering troughs for the horses down Main Street and uh, uh, boardwalks, big wide plank board, uh, wooden walks. And if you didn't watch out, some of them would come unmailed and they'd fly up and <laughs> you'd step on the wrong end of them. And, oh,